this video, we are going to cover logging into your account, um, creating a desktop shortcut or a bookmark to be able to quickly access your account. And then we're also going to review uh, the account settings um, just so that you're familiar with this aspect of the software. So to log in, we can look at my browser here. I am at www.stackct.com. So you can go to our main website and click on the sign in button. So in this case, the browser remembered my login information and took me directly to my project screen, which is awesome. You can see how uh, the www.stackct.com switched to go.stackct. So that's just a little quicker way. So if I open another tab and I just type the word go, see how it starts to remember? I can just type the word go hit enter and it'll take me in. So it's a very, very quick way to access the software. If you want to create a desktop icon, if we go under here, the little account settings menu, you'll see that there is um, a drag and drop emblem here. So I can click on this, drag it over to my desktop. Now it's not really pretty to look at, um, but it does work. So I can double click on this and you'll see that it again opens in a new tab um, and takes me directly to my projects view because the, the web browser remembers my, my login and password, which is an awesome thing. Another thing that you can do, and this is a little different by browser, so I'm using Safari on a Mac, but I can create a bookmark. So I can go under my bookmarks, I can add a bookmark, and I can call it stack. And what that does is when I open a new tab, it has my favorites, and then here's my stack login. I can just click on it and get right in. So it's a very, very fast process uh, to access. Now I did mention uh, this drag and drop emblem right here, but this is also in the account settings. So let me run through this quickly while I have your attention. So account settings and this will show you your company profile so when you first created your account it asked you um, for full part-time and asked for your trade and your trade specialties if you ever need to make a change here you can update that information and rechoose just like so your company settings here is if you need to make a change to your your company name um, if you use metric for every project, you can click this little checkbox to use metric by default. This is where you can create company labels and we'll cover that in a different area of the software. And this is if you're using the pro version of the software, this is also where you can create company level cost types. Again, we'll cover that in another area. Further down, we'll show the users for the account. You can update or change your billing information. It will show you your subscription and your renewal date, your billing history, and the different catalogs that are associated with your account. So just a quick run through there. Again, logging into the program, uh, www.stackct.com. The quicker way is go.stackct.com. You're also welcome to click under the little person icon, drag this to your desktop. Again, it doesn't look the greatest, but it'll get you where you want to go. And you can also bookmark the page, which will create a shortcut to be able to get back in. All right. Appreciate your time today. Thank you. In this session, we are going to talk about navigating the different project and calendar view, and then also uploading a new project. So when you first log into the software, you'll be taken to the project view, which is a list of view of your projects with your most recent project listed first. Um, this area is also searchable. So I imagine I have quite a few in here called training. So let's search for that. And we can say here are my different projects, which I've named training going all the way back to 2014. So to access any of these projects, I would just click on it and that would take me into the project. We also have different advanced search options, so I can click on this to bring down another dropdown. So if you're part of a multi-user account, you can 
during the upload process, which we'll get to in just a minute, you can assign a project to someone, uh, which makes it searchable. So everyone in the company still has access to a project that is assigned, but this is a way that you quickly search for like your own projects per se. And then you can also search by statuses. Again, we're gonna cover statuses here in just a minute on project upload, but you can search. So if I wanna see all of my projects that I've won, we can see all the projects that I've won here. Okay, so just to let you know that exists. If you prefer a calendar view over a list view, just take your mouse up here to the upper left and click on calendar. So this will give you a more traditional calendar type view. We can see the different color coding, again, is tied to that statuses that I had mentioned before. From the calendar view, I can create a new project or I can create an event. So an example of the event would be here where I have Valentine's Day listed, um, where the, it's just gonna come with a, a gray appearance with this little event icon. And events can be anything. You could notate you know, when, when people are off work or the project start date and expected end date. Um, anything that you would want to notate in a calendar view. And then to navigate the calendar, we'll have some back and forth arrows up here. So you can go back and forth through time to find the project that you're wanting um, and then just click on the project will, will take you directly into it. If you need to make any changes to the project bid date or a status, you can just click on this little edit pencil right here. So this little paint project, click on the edit pencil and we can see, oh, we can change a bid date if we wanted to or we can reassign a status. So say that paint job was submitted I can change that to bid submitted, click update, and it's gonna change that color so that we know what status that that project is currently in, okay? Well, let's go back a step and then actually talk about uploading a new project. And you can do that from the calendar screen or from the project screen. The process will be exactly the same. So I can click on new project. I can type in the name of my project I can specify a bid date, and again, I can go forward in time if I needed to. You are welcome to set a bid time if you want to, that is optional. And again, optionally, you can add a notes section. The notes will show right here. So here's my example, here are my notes, and it'll show right there, okay? If you wanna add more detail, we got this little show more options. Again, this is that assigned to that I was talking about. So I could assign it to a, a person you know, in my company. Again, everyone has access to that project. This is just a, a search kind of filtering criteria. Here are the different statuses. So we can assign that status upon upload. Like we could say that we're gonna bid this and then later come back by clicking that little edit pencil here to update the status. You can also put the physical address of the site if you want to. Uh, the important ones are your project name and your bid date, and we are gonna go to create and launch. So if we just hit create here, it would put the name on the calendar as kind of a placeholder uh, for a future project. In most cases, you'll go here to create and launch, and you'll see some different ways of, of uploading here. So if you have the project stored, and like a personal Dropbox or a Google Drive or Box, um, you can enter in your login information. So Dropbox, and I can do a connection by entering my Dropbox login and password. And I can actually sync or bring over files from Dropbox without ever having to have them on my computer, which is really cool. Um, in most cases, you know, if you receive uh, your plans via an email attachment or you download them from a, a bid room, you're gonna download them to your computer and then choose a local file. So, and once we find it, we're just gonna go find that project, hit choose, and then hit this little done button at the bottom. And then you'll see in a matter of a few seconds, the project will start to display here on the screen for you, all right? and we will pick that up from here in the next session. In this session, we're gonna focus on 
plan management and the different tasks or things we can accomplish here. So when you first upload your project, you'll notice that you're on the plans tab and you'll see a thumbnail image of each plan in the project. So this is a, a small, just kind of a sample set here for, for training purposes, but there's a lot of things that we can do here. First of all, um, if your plans come in and they need a rotation, a couple different ways that we can handle this. So if it's just a one or two pages, you can put a check box up here and go over here to the right navigation and you can rotate them this way. Okay. You can also do um, command or control A to highlight all of them at the same time and give them a rotation all at once. Or we also still have under the plans menu, we can rotate pages in the folder, choose the rotation, click on the little thing and rotate them all at once as well. Okay. Honestly, the control A and this method I think is the quickest. And if you need a single rotation, you can just choose that single page. Okay. Um, if you need to delete or if you wish to hide plans in the project, it's a similar method. So we can highlight the ones that we want to delete with a little checkbox in the corner and go over here to our little delete trash can icon. That is a permanent delete. Okay. So those would be removed from the project. If you just want to hide them and not do a permanent release delete, you would handle that over here. So I can go to this plan page 8.41. I can choose to hide the page. You'll see that it will be removed from the list and also removed from here. But if I need to bring that back at a later point, I can click on the little gear wheel and show my hidden pages and then bring it back to here to unhide. So that's a quick way to, to kind of clean up your working space without doing a permanent delete. Uh, for plan names, so in many cases, the software will be able to detect the plan name and, and bring that forward for you. If the software is not able to, you have a couple different options. You can individually go into each page by clicking on the little ellipse and you can choose to rename the page so you can do them one by one manually. A better option though is to use our auto naming. So I would click into a plan page and then hold down with the mouse and then use the scroll wheel on my mouse to kind of zoom in just to make this page number a nice and big area in the middle of the screen. Click on the little settings wheel and choose to auto name. So here we give you a little bit of text instruction, but we're basically just going to draw a rectangle around the sheet number. So one click here, drag the mouse diagonally, double click there, and then hit start. What we're telling the software there is to go to every plan page in the software and then look in the area that I drew and then pull that text forward. So something to be careful there you want to kind of allow when you're drawing your, your rectangle you don't want to make it too tight uh, just in case there are you know plan pages that may have more digits further down the line you can press escape on your keyboard to get out of that so you want a nice big rectangle also one that is not covering the borders so something just like that double click hit start and you will see that that will start to process through it will rename everything over here on the left and it will also rename at the thumbnail view. Okay. Let's talk about plan search. So you've got your plans up here, you've got them named um, and you want a keyword search. So we have a very powerful keyword search in the software. I can go right here and say that I want to search for the word brick and it's going to say, okay, of all the plans in the project, it's going to filter and show me the thumbnail images of the plans that contain that word. In this case, I just found one plan page and it's also going to say, okay, on page a4.1, it found 10 instances. So I can either click here to view or click here to view. It will take you into the plan page and you will see those keywords highlighted on there. So it's an awesome way to narrow your plan pages down. You know, if you've got, 
100, 200, 500 plan pages. It's a great way to kind of filter this view and then also quickly find uh, the plan pages that are, are important to you, okay? Lastly, let's talk about folder structures um, and dragging and dropping. So by default, all your plans are gonna go into a plans folder. You do have the ability to create other folders. So I can go here and say, you know what? I'm going to designate uh, a folder for my images. So image folder. Boom. And then I can go over here. So it's gonna put a, an empty folder down here. I can just go grab this little Google Earth image and place it into my image folder. So we can see now I'm in the plans folder in the image folder. So it's a great way to separate and also kind of a quick route in. So I can go directly to this and it'll zoom me to that. Um, another great use is by CSI. So if I wanted to create you know, a folder for my division three, division four, division nine, and then select those plans that are pertaining to that CSI and then just drag them over to the folder, okay? You may also upload an, an addenda folder and you wanna drag those plans into an addenda folder, okay? You can also create a folder and then upload the plans into. So you can upload everything into your plans folder and then create folders and then drag them over. Or you can, we'll use my addenda version. I can create a folder and then upload files directly into that folder. So we have a lot of different flexibility here to kind of get you where you want to go. Uh, folder structure is a wonderful thing and I encourage it, especially if you're gonna be working with addenda and you wanna use our plan overlay feature, it makes it a little bit easier and also just a great way to, to kind of add some structure uh, to formalize your project here. So that's all about plan man management. In the next session, we will get into uh, taking measurements and, and creating takeoffs. So appreciate your time. Thank you. In this session, we are going to cover um, setting the scale, actually doing takeoffs and how what the different measurement types look like. We're going to briefly talk on Label groups are grouping your data and we'll kind of end with, with some hotkeys. So we've uploaded our plan. Um, you can see from the last video, I, I created different folders. I drug things around into those folders and we, at this point we are ready to measure. So I'm going to click on a plan that I want to measure. That is going to open it up into like a full screen mode. From this point, I can hold down with the mouse. I can pull the plan around. I can use my scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Um, if you do not have a scroll wheel, you can also do some incremental zoom in and outs over here, okay? So the first thing that we wanna do is set our scale for the plan page. So a couple different ways we can do that. We can see that it is listed as a quarter inch. So we can either set it as a quarter inch and go back and verify it, or we can calibrate. I'll show you both ways. So to calibrate, we are going to find a known dimension. Here's a nice 18 foot, two inch section right here. Click on my scale box, tell the software, okay, we're going to measure an 18 feet, two inch section. You can pull the plan around if you need to. I'll click on okay. And I'm gonna click on one point, drag my mouse across and click on the second point that will set the scale for me and you can be completely confident with that. Um, you can also choose from the list of standard scales. So it's listed as a quarter inch. We'll have our architecturals above, our civils down below, and we will just grab that quarter inch. And then we're gonna use the dimension line over here to verify our scale, okay? So we'll cover all of our different markups tools in a, in a further training session, but dimension line, we're gonna grab this little guy, we're gonna click on one, drag it across, and we can see, yeah, so we're looking, we're looking pretty good with a scale, so we know that we can be comfortable 
Uh, with the dimension line, I can either click once, double click for placement. If I want to leave that on the plan, just to know that I have as a, a visual reminder that I've calibrated, um, or we can delete it off. Okay, select single, we'll highlight, and you can either delete here or delete on your keyboard to remove that. But now I'm comfortable with the scale, and I'm good. So let's create some takeoff. So Whatever you're going to measure in the software, you're going to represent each different type of thing that you're going to measure as a separate takeoff. So I'm going to create a new takeoff. I'm going to tell the system what I am going to measure. So 12 inch tile. I'm going to choose the corresponding measurement type for that. In this case, it would be area, so I'm looking at the square footage area of, of uh, the floor here. But let's do a quick run through here. Also, just as a note to self, if you select one of these, it will give you a quick description down here for what the different measurement types are, okay? So an area, in this case, I'm dealing with an architectural or a floor plan, so that area could be the floor or the ceiling. If I'm looking at an elevation view, you know, the side of the building could be an area. Linear could be, um, you know, HVAC. It could be plumbing. It could be electrical, where you're just looking for a linear foot of a run. A count is just kind of what it says. So we can count different fixtures, outlets, uh, anything that you can imagine. We also have an auto count, which I'll show you in just a moment linear with drop so this is geared more towards our electrical friends but say that I'm going to do a linear measurement and then every time I click on the mouse I want to drop so say that I'm going to drop an additional six feet down to an outlet I can do so with this pitched area and pitched linear are for our roofing friends so if you're dealing with a sloped roof the system will prompt you for the rise and the run of that sloped roof and again, for pitch linear, so if you're dealing with a hip or a valley, uh, the system will prompt you for the rise or run. Surface area. This would be if you want to measure walls. So I could choose a surface area here to measure these walls. And then the system is going to prompt us for the height of that wall. Volume 2D and volume 3D are for our concrete and sometimes masonry. Uh, friends, so volume 2D would be a concrete slab. So we're going to draw an area measurement, and the system is going to prompt us for the depth of that concrete. And a volume 3D would be more for a concrete footer, where I'm going to draw a linear measurement, and the system is going to prompt us for the width or the depth of that footer. Again, if you have any questions, you can just simply click on this, and you will see that we give you a text instruction for each one of these. Or, as always, just kind of chat in with any questions, okay? So our 12-inch tile, we're going to do that as an area. I can do a description. So say that I want to do, you know, this is item, you know, to quote a stock number or any kind of description that you want. The system's going to automatically pick a fill color. So when I draw this, the system's going to shade this in with a specific color. Like I said, the system is going to automatically pick that color, but you can override. So especially in this case where the, the system automatically picked black, that's not the great. So we can do that. And then also the line color or the line thickness if we wanted to change that. Okay. So let's go ahead and measure this room for some 12 inch tile. I'm going to click on start measuring. Take my mouse over to where I want to start so I can start in the corner. It is one click to start, drag my mouse, one click for every turn, and double click to finish. And that is going to shade that in, okay? Another quick way if you're dealing with a rectangular object like this is, um, we can hop over here to our rectangle tool. This makes drawing a little bit quicker. So I can click on this rectangle tool, click once in this corner, and drag down to the opposing corner, double click, and there we go. So I can easily toggle back and forth between these drawing tools. Another really helpful trick is if you're in the, the polygon, if you click once, you'll notice that 
my line is really wavy. If I press and release on the shift key, that will force the system to draw straight lines, which can make drawing a little quicker. If I want to toggle out of that, again, just press the shift key and it takes me more back to a free draw. Okay. When I'm done, I can see that I've measured 428 square feet of tile, which is awesome. All right, let's do another example for our count. I had mentioned auto count and some of you probably noticed that there's not an auto count here in the list. So say that we're gonna do an auto count uh, for the sink right here. Again, I'm gonna specify that as a count. Again, I can add a description. I can change the color or in the case of counts, I can also change the count symbol. We'll stay with a medium check mark for now. And then over here, when I hit start takeoff, you'll see that I could go and manually count this by clicking with the mouse. Right here, we have this little auto count, which is an awesome little tool. We're gonna click on this. I'm gonna draw a rectangle around this. Double click and that starts. So it'll say that auto count is in progress. It's gonna go search the plan page for this symbol and then actually count all the sinks for us, which is a, just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, let's talk briefly about if we need to deal with multiple scales. So say that this plan page, I'm dealing with a quarter inch scale. We'll have to use our imaginations a little bit, but say that, see how I picked out my sinks there? I love that. Um, say that this was a, a, a half inch scale or something different, you know, usually a section of you may have a different scale you can easily handle those scenarios in stack. So I did all my drawings with my quarter inch, which is awesome. All I'm going to do is come up here, set my scale and say, you know what? This next one is at a half inch. I would use the dimension line to verify, okay? But now that my scale is set for the half inch, I can just draw that. So you can set or change the scale um, as many times as you would need to on a plan page. And you can also adjust the scale afterwards. So say that I drew all of these at a quarter inch, and then I realized, oh no, I had made a mistake. These were all supposed to be at an eighth inch. You can easily make that change. You do not need to delete them and start over. So to edit, I can edit a single measurement just by clicking on it, and that gives me access to this one file where I could, this one measurement where I could change the scale. In this case, though, I want to, to change them all from a quarter to an eighth. I'm gonna to go to multi-select, draw a rectangle. So you click once and kind of see that's faded, but I'm drawing a rectangle type object around there. It's gonna highlight all of these at once, and then I could go and make my, my scale change and say, you know what? I really meant to do that at an eighth. And you'll see that once we make that change, it will readjust, um, readjust over here. Okay, so an eighth is actually incorrect. So let's uh, make that change back to a quarter where, where it belongs. All right, so I also want to briefly touch on using label groups um, and also talk about some different settings that we can do with the takeoff templates. So let's do that quickly. So under here, if I want to control the visibility, you can see that I can just do the little eyeball. I can quickly hide that layer. I can also hide my counts. A little harder to see, but you can kind of see the, the, the check marks flickering. If I wanted to hide everything, say that I had an entire list of takeoffs, I could hide them all at once, just like so, okay? If I wanted to change the name or the color, I can just click on this and say, make a change to the name or the description or the color. That'll take place immediately. If I want to go into drawing mode, I'll click on the little green arrow and start to measure. Or we have some additional functions here. Again, edit will be the same as clicking on the name. If you wanna change the name, the description or the color, you can duplicate this, so say, instead of creating another takeoff and calling it 24 inch tile, 
you know, in choosing area and setting the description and so forth, I could just duplicate this and just change the name. It's going to already remember it's an area take off a little quicker workflow for you. I can add this to my library. I'll show you that in just a minute. Or if I wanted to delete this takeoff, I could delete it out and it would also delete all of the measurements with it, okay? So some different functionality we can do here. I did mention quickly the library here and I'll touch on this again in future, but what that does is you don't have to create the same takeoff over and over again for all your your future projects. So say that this 12 inch tile is one that's very common for me. I can add it to my library. The next time that I upload a new project, my project tab will be empty just because I haven't started anything yet. But I can click on my library tab and it will have all the different takeoff templates here. Okay, this is also um, searchable. So I can type in brick and it will do my different types of brick. So this takeoff template library is a wonderful thing and will save you a lot of time. And let's quickly talk about, I know I'm kind of throwing a lot at you on this one, uh, grouping of our information. So again, we'll cover this in more detail in a future, but I just want you to, to quickly know it exists. So if we look at our reports, it's gonna look at this in its totality. So it's gonna say our 12 inch tile, uh, 427.98 uh, square feet. And we can see that our scale is, is at a quarter inch. But say that I wanted to know the measurements between plan G and plan H, okay? We handle that with labels. So to get to the labels, I'm just gonna click on this. It's gonna take me to this label section, give you a little text instruction. We can see that we do not have any labels created. So let's do one just really quickly. So our label, name will be what we want to group by. So in this case, we want to group by the word unit so that we have our unit G and our unit H. Add label and then our label options will be create a drop down for us. So we wanted to do um, unit G and I can either hit the enter key or I can hit the plus key and unit H and now we have this. So what's cool about this, I can either use labels before or after the fact. So I could assign something to unit G and then go draw here. And it's gonna, the system will assign that to unit G. Uh, personal preference though, I think it's a little easier to do after the fact. So again, I'm gonna use multi-select. I'm gonna drag a rectangle around uh, plan G. So it's gonna grab the count for my sink and then also my tile. It's gonna highlight all those for me and I can say, you know what? Those are assigned to unit G. Go right back over and do the same with my H. There we go. And now I'll have a little bit more functionality in my report. So I still have my total square footage just like I did before. But now I can um, group that and I can group it by um, So I'll click on my reports and we can see here that now I have a unit category. So I can see, okay, we have a total of 427.98 square feet. It is assigned to unit H and unit G. If I wanna see the breakdown, I'm just gonna click on here. So now it shows, okay, my 12 inch tile for unit G is 184.93 square feet. My 12 inch tile for unit H is 243.05 square feet. If I wanna collapse this back, I'm just gonna click on it and it, that collapse it back. So a nice visual way to see that my 12 inch tile is in two different units and I can quickly see what measurements uh, are associated with that. All right, so I know we covered a lot in this one. 
I did want to end on hotkeys. So I did a little question mark up here. So what's new? That's an awesome little thing because it'll show you what new features we've added to the software. We also have an online help guide, which is searchable. So I can click on this. I can keyword search for anything that I want to learn about. Keyword search hotkeys. And this will bring up a list of hotkeys for the software. Okay, just to make your workflow a little bit faster. So awesome. I appreciate your time today. And next we are going to move on to move into session two of our training. Okay. Briefly, you want to touch on ways to uh, get in touch with us. So I mentioned the help center here. I can also initiate a phone call or dial that from my phone. Um, I can chat by either clicking on a little chat window and starting a new conversation, or I can initiate a chat from up here too. Oops, this one, chat now, and then type in, and then someone on our team will get back to you very quickly with your questions. So again, appreciate your time today. I will catch you in the next video. Thank you.